Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Irons, let's start with the numbers. We hear news about the cases going down. We hear news about variants. Let's talk about the numbers, what's happening across the country. Well, sure, Todd. So we hit another milestone over the weekend, over 27 million um, confirmed cases. The number for today is 27 million 800. 8,760 confirmed cases and 464,539 deaths as of this morning. Um, however, um, as you said, there, there actually is some encouraging news. So on Saturday, at least 2,662 new coronavirus deaths, which is less than 3,000, and 105,027 new cases were reported in the U.S. Both of those numbers are lower um, than we have seen um, in quite a long time for a single day. And if you if you look at it sort of in an aggregate, over the past week, there's been an average of 121,677 cases a day, a decrease of 31% from the average two weeks earlier. You might remember we were talking about numbers in the 200,000s. Um, the seven-day rolling average of new cases is trending down in almost every part of the country. However, while all of that is encouraging, um, the, that number is still 104% higher than the summer peak on July 25th, when the seven-day average was six, just over 66,000. Wow. Okay. So that that's a huge point. That it, yeah. you know the perception may be that they're falling, but we are still at a very very high level. Yep. Absolutely. Um, hospitalizations are also falling. They're down 16%. However, however. Um, the seven-day average of deaths is up about 2%. Um, so, and, and we know that deaths follow case, uh, case identification or diagnosis. Um, there's also been some delays in reporting. Um, so, you know, I think that um, it's an encouraging trend, but, um, you know, the, there are worrisome variants. Um, there are, are differences in the part of the country. So, so we can't really let our guards down. We have to really, we really have to stay with this. I think uh, I'd like to focus a little bit on the on the variants mm -hmm. um, because we are starting to see evidence of quicker source of spread in certain geographies in the states. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, so, um, you know, the variant first found in Britain, which is the B117 variant, is rapidly spreading in the U.S. Um, over 600 cases have been identified, and it's doubling every 10 days. Um, the um, Dr. Fauci and others have said that it. Um, will likely or it may become the dominant variant in the U.S. in March. Um, and that's why we really have to kind of hold ourselves back here and, and, and look at the decreasing in cases that we're seeing now um, with um, uh, with 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 some concern, you know, because because if this variant, which is more transmissible, really starts to take hold, um, it will um, those numbers are going to start to go up. Um, now, the good news I heard this morning: genomic sequencing surveillance has increased tenfold, um, and um, as of uh, the press conference this morning, um, they will include academic, commercial, and state labs and increase the surveillance three to fourfold over that. Um, there was also some uh, new research, um, not yet peer reviewed, that came out that um, pretty much seconded what Dr. Uh, Fauci said that it could become the predominant variant in March, and um, uh, also that it's spreading particularly quickly in Florida. And that's a problem because I think we saw a lot of pictures coming out of the Super Bowl weekend with a lot of unmasked fans and a lot of bar crawling down in, uh, in the Florida area and hope that doesn't turn into its own super spreader event. Absolutely. Um, you know, there. I think that the public health officials and physicians were warning Americans around ga against gathering for Super Bowl parties with people from other households. But, um, but you're right. You know, there there were a lot of pictures um, yesterday um, on the TV of of crowds um, without masks, and um, that's that's an easy way of putting yourself and your family um, in danger. Well, let's talk a little bit uh, about vaccines. Can you give us the latest news on what's happened over the past week and the status of our rollout? 
Yeah. So um, the good news, the good milestone finally is that um, more Americans have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine that have tested positive for the virus, an early but hopeful milestone. It looks as though states um, are getting their, their arms around um, how to ramp up the distribution mechanisms. Um, and, you know, at this time, um, the, the problem is that the supply, <laughs> the supply is less than the demand. Um, in terms of new vaccines that are coming out on Thursday, Johnson and Johnson um, submitted a request for emergency use authorization from the FDA for its uh, single dose coronavirus vaccine. Um, that vaccine has been shown in studies to be especially effective at preventing severe cases and death, and if offer authorized, would be a third vaccine option in the U.S. Um, in terms of the regulatory process, the FDA um, has um, announced that their um, external advisory committee, Verb Pack, um, will review the data. Um, um, during a public meeting um, on February 26th. Generally, the agenda and supporting data are published on the FDA website um, two days before that meeting. So if anyone would like to um, review the, um, the data that the manufacturers um, have has submitted, um, that's one way they can do that. Excellent. In terms of the rollout itself, um, you know, there's been talk about increasing supply and just getting that kind of uh, daily dose uh, up. What do we see in terms of the rollout? So the, the CDC reported that more than 2.2 million doses were given on Saturday, 1.6 million on Friday. Um, you know, and this brings the latest seven-day average to 1.4 million doses a day, which approaches President Biden's new goal of 1.5 million shots per day. Um, there's still a large gap between the states administering vaccines at the highest and lowest rates. Um, Alaska has been given first doses to 14% to of its residents. By comparison, only about six. 6.3% of residents of Idaho have received a shot, but um, but we are hearing that there actually are delays and not only the data being put into the system, but then the data making its way to the states and to the CDC. Um, there is some um, new data on the effect of or the efficacy of the vaccines, um, either in the pipeline or those uh, currently available against variants. Um, we learned over the weekend that South Africa halted use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, at, in their country, um, where evidence emerged that the vaccine did not protect clinical trial participants from mild or moderate um, illness caused by the more contagious variant, um, the South African variant. Um, it's not yet clear, these are just news reports, um, if it protects um, against a more severe cases, but they've put that on pause. Um, Pfizer and Moderna have both said that preliminary laboratory studies indicate that their, their vaccines, while still protective, are less effective against the South African variant, although it's important to say um, that they have both, uh, uh, both of those manufacturers, Pfizer and Moderna, have said that the the vaccines are effective against uh, the UK variant. Um, Novavax and Johnson & Johnson have also sequenced test samples from their clinical trial participants in South Africa. Um, and both reported lower efficacy than in the US. But once again, until we see the data, um, it's really unclear what that efficacy um, is, um, is, 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 what that efficacy is. Um, Although more, more contagious variants are spreading, top U.S. health officials um, sounded notes of optimism on Sunday that both the supply of vaccines and the rate of vaccination will uh, steadily increase. Um, one news item that came out today said that Pfizer um, announced that it expects to nearly cut in half the amount of time it takes to produce um, their vaccine. Um, and this is due to efficiencies um, that have been found in the system that they've that they've learned um, while um, scaling up their manufacturing. Um, so that's good news from the, on the supply side. Um, um, and also in terms of the distribution, um, I guess this is a, 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 you know, given the Super Bowl yesterday, um, the NFL is making all of its 30 state stadiums available as max vac vaccination sites. So hopefully those two will come together, supply, demand, um, and also distribution a third, and um, we'll begin to see more people vaccinated. And hopefully we'll start to see, you know, some of the states that are lagging behind others uh, to learn from their best practices across the country uh, yeah. so that when that supply is fixed, 
uh, we'll be able to, to continue getting shots in arms. Well, let's yeah. uh, continue to, uh, uh, to the next topic, which is uh, misinformation. Uh, what, are we, uh, what are we seeing this week uh, that we can clarify for our viewers out there? So it's not really misinformation per se, but I, but I think that many people are confused about what and who dictates um, where vaccines go in the U.S., um, who gets them, how, how they're prioritized. And, and physicians are likely receiving a lot of these questions. Um, to, be, to be honest, people are confused for good reason. It's really confusing. Um, Federal, you know, state and local health authorities across the U.S. are using dozens of algorithms to help determine where the vaccines are sent. Um, in the end, you know, the federal vaccines are sent from the federal government to the states, and the states um, decide um, how to prioritize that vaccine distribution um, based on um, what is going on in their state and what they feel is best. Although they do, their formulas generally follow guidelines from the CDC about who to prioritize. Um, so the, the, the result is that Americans are experiencing wide disparities in vaccine access. And, um, you know, this is especially um, confusing if people have relatives in different states. And, you know, some, some relatives may live in the state with a lower age cutoff than another. Um, just as an example, um, Oregon, for instance, has prioritized teachers over the elderly, an approach that could help schools and businesses open. New Jersey has put smokers ahead of educators, um, which could save lives. Um, you know, any of that could change. Um, so I think that um, the best, the best that a, a information that a physician can give a patient is really to check with their state um, in terms of, you know, what group of individuals the state is currently vaccinating um, and um, where they might fit in that prioritization. Yeah, that is hard because in the days of social media, when you see, you know, a lot of different people getting their shots across yeah. different states, I, I think I read an article over the weekend, it creates vaccine envy. Yeah. And so uh, it is the best thing is to check your state and see where they stand right now. Well, finally, are there any key messages from the AMA that people uh, should hear this week? Um, yeah, um, once again, the American Hospital Association, American Medical Association, and the American Nurses Association released a public service announcement urging the American public to get the COVID-19 vaccine when it's their turn. Um, the PSA stresses that the vaccines are safe, effective, and help us all as we work together to defeat COVID-19. Um, in addition, and, and, and this is also important, on Wednesday, the Maternal Immunization Task Force and its partners, which included the AMA, urged the COVID-19 that COVID-19 be available to pregnant individuals. All pregnant individuals who choose to receive the COVID-19 vaccine must be allowed to do so in alignment with their state and local vaccination allocation plan. This includes the estimated 330,000 healthcare, healthcare workers who are pregnant um, and should be allowed to receive the vaccine as part of the first phase of vaccine distribution plans. Um, reports of pregnant individuals being refused vaccination are really concerning. Mm. Absolutely. Well, thank you for clarifying that. And that is it for today's COVID-19 update. Thanks for watching. And Dr. Irons, thanks as usual for being here. We'll be back with another update shortly. In the meantime, for resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us. Please take care.